It's hard to believe 2022 is nearly over. But what that also means is King of the Hammers is just right around the corner. Now I don't compete in King of the Hammers, but I like to go out there and have a good time and go rock crawling around. But I need to get this rock crawler put back together so that we can get out there and hit the trails. So we've been running this rock crawler pretty hard for the last few years. So it's at the point I need to go through it and give it a little bit of attention. The biggest issue that I came across on it is that the rear axle housing, I've always suspected it of being a little bent, but it was a lot more than a little bent. The number one way I found that the housing was bent is the axle shaft was actually rubbing inside the housing. These bolts kept working loose and so I pulled the axle shaft out and found that it was rubbing inside of the housing. That was my first indicator that the axle housing was bent. This is a Yukon chromoly shaft. It's a little bit thicker right here than the stock shaft is. So what I did to get by for the meantime was I stuck a stock shaft back in there. I didn't have time to go back through and build a whole new axle so I got by with the stock one for quite a while actually a couple years of running a lot of trails i ran another little test here just to see how bent it was and what i found actually blew my mind i can't believe that it didn't give me more problems than it did because it was really really bent what i'm going to do is demonstrate how i know that this axle housing's bent if you watch right here when i spin this axle housing watch this tire right here you can see that the tires are pulling in then out, in then out. And that is how you can tell if an axle housing's bent. So what blows me away about this is I've been driving it like this for a long time and how I didn't end up breaking more axle shafts or how this didn't cause a bigger issue. I mean, how can it be this bent, but still kept going and not causing me any issues for so long? I'm just gonna start fresh with this housing, this uh, axle housing I got from my friend Gabe Wellfelt. It's got a very nice truss on it that goes all the way to the end. So the only reason my old one didn't go all the way to the end is because I cut it down for clearance and it made it a little bit shorter. So I didn't think it would matter that much because there are other axle trusses on the market that don't go all the way to the end. So I didn't think it would be that big of a deal. But in the long run, it still ended up bending. This one I'm getting ready to put under this right now. And this is gonna be one of my projects this winter. It's gonna spur a bunch of videos itself. So looking forward to getting back in here and fixing this thing up. Also, uh, some people had suggested that I should do a video on the background of this whole buggy. So that's what I was going to do, uh, a video dedicated to building this one, because I still have all the pictures and everything along the way. So like I said, this one was designed by Ultra 4 racer and builder Paul Horschel. So it's pretty unique. I was the, had the first trail chassis that he built, and there's only a few of us out there with one. So it's a pretty unique chassis and looking forward to making some more videos about it. So after after spinning that axle housing around like that, I can't believe that this axle wasn't giving me more issues than it was. After all, it wasn't breaking shafts it, and the end seals weren't leaking. Simply, it was leaking down from the bottom. So that just goes to show just how tough these 14 bolt axles are. That one can be that bent and not cause any major issue. If anything, it should give people a peace of mind that these axles can really withstand a lot because I've been driving it like that for a long time and I had no idea that it was as bad as it was. Mm -hmm. 